thanks, Sally, and can I congratulate you on your election, which is a fabulous uh, outcome. I think you will do a great job as mayor of our uh, magnificent city of Melbourne, uh, which is the centre point of our state. But our state is not just, of course, about Melbourne, and it's not just about um, the metropolitan area either. It's an integrated state. We obviously have, a, and I should acknowledge my parliamentary colleagues who are here tonight, and the many people from all over our metropolitan area and beyond. Uh, but our state is a, um, a more than just the metropolitan area. It is an integrated state. It is our regional cities and the country as well. We're obviously facing very significant uh, population growth. You know, 143,000 last year, about 90% <coughs> which is in metropolitan Melbourne, and uh, 147,000 the year before, and similar weight of movement into metropolitan Melbourne as opposed to our country areas. And we're very focused on seeing a more balanced growth in our state, and making sure that the state is not just a big heaving metropolis, and we'll click over five million uh, in the next uh, few months in Melbourne, uh, but we want to see a state of cities and we want to see a better and more interconnected state. We'll have a lot to say about that as we go forward. Although we've already announced a long haul uh, rolling stock and a number of important extensions in the country which will make uh, our country lines work better and will make uh, the opportunities for those who are coming to Melbourne and, and wanting to work or coming for medical appointments uh, much better. But we'll also need that um, people travelling out of the city are able to do more as well. Uh, but you would uh, be forgiven uh, for thinking that it was all rosy on public transport and everyone who catches public transport regularly, as I do, uh, will understand that it is not all rosy. Our um, trams are overcrowded, our trains are massively overcrowded and the performance of our network has deteriorated over the last four years. So when you look at the performance of the metropolitan train system, uh, and the figures have just been released a, a day or two late, but nonetheless released this afternoon, what is clear is that the uh, about um, 13 of the 16 lines have seen a deterioration in punctuality compared to November 2014 and the number of cancellations has increased on nine of the ten uh, metropolitan lines. And it is a similar story with our country services, with our V-line services. It is true that V-line uh, patronage is up significantly, uh, but it's not true that patronage is up across all of our system. Uh, we've seen the performance of our bus system uh, drop with actually a fall in the number of um, of people using our bus services and you've got to ask why the government has not been able to manage our bus services and manage those intersections and interchanges between buses and trains and buses and trams and we've got to frankly do much, much better at integrating our system and actually getting an outcome where people can traverse the city more successfully, they can move across the city uh, much more effectively. And it's important, I think, to note that we've also made some announcements, and there's obviously a lot more to come. We've obviously got uh, some way to go before the state election in, on the 24th of November, and we will be making announcements right through until the end period. Um, but in fact, we've made a number of important announcements already. The duplication of the line between Eltham and Greensboro, which is, is an important uh, capacity um, the, uh, expansion for the northern suburbs of Melbourne who have got very significant growth. We've also made announcements about Baxter and the extension of the line from Frankston to Baxter and the extension of the line from Cranbourne to Clyde. Uh, these are all important. None of them on their own are obviously going to change the system um, uh, uh, for the, the broad, but they're going to help in individual areas and make a difference for people who can access those services. When we extend line capacity, we will be making sure that buses uh, are, are reworked to make sure that they actually meet and that the, the best outcome is redesigned for that area. But it's also a question of making sure that our, our um, foot traffic, the pedestrians who come into our stations and our bus and 
tram stops are able to access and making sure that the uh, bicycle uh, network is actually integrated in a way that enables people to use that multiple modes to move around the city. I mean, Melbourne is a city that's got um, good, traditionally had good radial uh, rail networks, but not enough capacity moving across between those radial parts of the system. And we're certainly looking very closely at that, looking at how we can get better outcomes for that, uh, for, for those who want to move across. And the integration of planning is also important with um, going back to Plan Melbourne, and I'll, I'll make one point of bipartisanship here, the new Plan Melbourne Refresh picks up the idea of the 20-minute city that was put in place uh, by Matthew Guy and the idea of trying to bring work closer to where people live and enabling people to, to work within that 20-minute um, radius of where they live. And there's a lot more work to be done, both with transport but connected with, um, with uh, planning on that as well. And I, I should say that there are some things that I agree with where the uh, government has proceeded. We support level crossing removals, uh, but what we don't support is the mismanagement of projects which are massively over budget. Now, the initial estimates, $5 billion, and it's now at least three and a bit billion dollars more than that, at least 60% more than the estimates. Now, what I would say is even good projects need to be managed properly. Even good projects need to be brought in in a budgetary sense. To squander a large amount of money because of the government's mismanagement of projects means less of the work that you want done is done. It means that you have less opportunity to do the things that you want to do. Now, the Minister's talked about the removal of um, the uh, level crossings along the Caulfield to Dagenham section. And we supported the removal of those level crossings, but we did not support the model that the government used. The government obviously went to the election with a clear promise to remove them, but no indication and in fact, in some cases, written correspondence to say that they would be rail up the road outcomes. And in fact, the elevated rail, the sky rail, was not what people wanted. It was not what they expected. And, um, you know, if the government thought it was a good idea at the time, they could have been honest and they were not. Um, but nonetheless, that is done and the community uh, will live with that for many years to come, a suboptimal outcome in terms of what could have been achieved if a proper rail and road solution had occurred. And I would say um, more on, on a number of the uh, large projects. I think the Metro is a very important project. Obviously, we had a different allocation with a different uh, alignment um, in 2014-15. Um, rejig the metro, we would have had a South Melbourne connection, a South, uh, South Yarra connection, and we believe that that South Yarra connection is extremely important. It is bizarre to be disconnecting two lines from a major station. We're not actually, you know, talking about whether we connect them, we're actually proposing under the government's model to disconnect them. And I'm hopeful but not at all convinced that the government will honour what was said by the planning panel and that they will not build it in a way that will make retrofitting my own possible. I'm hopeful that the government will, in fact, um, honour the commitment that the planning minister made that, in fact, the construction will be done in a way that a retrofit is possible. And it's all very well for the Minister now to say that they don't support South Yarra, but prior to the last election, Neil Farrow, her candidate in Cran, did support it. And he said that widely, he said it on radio, and he made it clear to the community. And um, there are some things Sam and I agree on, and some things we don't, but one thing we do agree on is South Yarra ought to be connected. And, um, you know, the Labor Party has actually changed its position from the last election. It's actually quite important to understand that. I do believe 
that there are significant opportunities to um, improve our transport system, not just rail and buses, but there's opportunities to use our ride sharing arrangements. And um, I'm noting, noting that the government has destroyed value in the taxi industry with its legislation. And whilst we all understand that technology has changed the nature of um, commercial passenger vehicle movements and that we can't undo what the technology <coughs> is impacting, we could have had a fairer run forward uh, than what the government has put in place. And it um, has been a very sad outcome and a, a failure to understand the impact on the families and communities the way the government has treated uh, the taxi industry. There are other major projects, though, that are important. We're not at all convinced that the government's approach at Monash is the right one. The government is um, narrowing the scope of its proposal to simply a tram, and we think a tram may not be the right outcome for the volume that is required. And we will certainly, we've certainly made an announcement to strengthen the protections in that corridor in the last day or so. <laughs> Thank you.